Good morning again, you all. Glad to see you again. Hey, if you can't see, you got to be able to use something to be able to help you see. You don't want to walk around blind, do you? Good to see you all again. <laughs> no, I didn't take my magnifying glass to see you all. <laughs> I had it some time ago. How's everything been going? Yeah, I had a lot of questions, I'm sure. Wish we could talk about it. Guess what? We can. Remember last week, we found out that we could actually know Jesus even though we hadn't seen him. This week, we're going to talk a little bit about the sight thing again. But before we go, our word of the month is what? Faith. Believing in what you can't see because of what you can see. Believing in the God that we can't see, but we could actually see how he's helped us all throughout our life. How he's done so many things to answer our prayers, to calm our fears, to deliver us from our troubles. What troubles? Yeah, the trouble about the bullies sitting at your table, the trouble about the homework being left and the teacher said you could bring it in tomorrow. All those are troubles that you've had and I know I've had. We become worried. We become stressed. We become very, 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 very scared at times. But we have a God that we have never seen that we can actually see through our lives and also through the lives of others. It's not just what, what Mr. Elvis learned. I can actually look at somebody else and see how God has helped them. And guess what? If their God is my God, I can believe the same way if it just happened to me. It gives us great understanding because you don't know it all. You don't experience it all. That's why we have to be able to be bold and talk about what God has actually done in our lives. Even as what? Yeah, earth falls apart for life. We don't have to wait till we get Mr. Air with a great hair and everything. We can talk about it as young kids. We can develop those big, strong, oh, not these muscles. These muscles. Having the mind of Christ Jesus and having the heart to be able to obey and follow God. So, you say, well, Mr. Elmer, you could be making all this up. <laughs> I, I, I get it. We'll go to Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1. And what does it talk about? Being sure of what you because of what you I just read it to you. Hebrews, you go all the way back into the what? To the New Testament. And this is who writing? Paul writing a letter. And he does what? He's encouraging us. Faith is being sure of what we hope for and being sure of what we do not see. Yeah. But also, look at verse number two. It says, by it, the elders obtain a good report. Yeah. That means not only 
can we live by faith and please God? But when we do, we actually leave as a wreck for somebody else to be able to say, I'm not sure. But I remember Mr. Edward. Oh, I remember. Oh, I remember. They can do it. I can do it. Yeah. We have to be able to do what? Encourage one another. Have you ever felt down? Have you ever felt, oh, I just can't do it. Ah! Yeah. We all do. In some form or fashion. And everybody expresses it differently. But our faith. What is the faith again? Believing in something we can't see because of what we can see. Hmm. It becomes such a challenge. But it's worth it. It's, have you ever had to clean up the room? What if you clean up the room with the lights off and the blinds closed and you couldn't see anything? How well would you do? Not good at all. Because you can't what? You can't see. You can't see. That's right. But when the lights come on, you can see and you can know so much more what to do. Jesus talks about those things in all the Gospels about this thing called light and the importance of it. I could be talking about a little bit of light today. You just got to be patient and wait. You got to have what? Faith. So, if you give me a second, I can tell you the story about, at times, you can see things much differently when you come to know Jesus. Things can be seen much differently when we know Jesus. Give me one second. I'll be back. So glad to have you all back. I told you all I would tell you all the story. i tell you about that later. I told you guys, you get ahead of yourself too much. So there's actually a story about a guy, a guy named Saul. You guys may have known him as Paul. Well, that was his name after he had been converted. Well, before he was converted, you remember a couple of weeks ago I told you about a story where a guy stood by where Stephen was stoned to death and the people took off their clothes and laid it at this guy's feet? And you remember the guy's name was Saul? Yeah. Well, this Saul, he had actually reached out to Caiaphas, which was the high priest, and he got a letter. And, and you need a letter basically to be able to take people from one city or county to another, and I'm kind of using that terminology so that you guys can understand. It's almost like if you live in Jefferson County and you're going to Shelby County and you're going to Madison County, you need a letter to be able to put them in that jail. Well, he went to Caiaphas and got this letter because he was going to go to a far place called Damascus because he heard a church is sprang up. Well, a little bit of background about Paul. Paul, actually, he was raised to be a total believer of God. And in so much so, he was actually a student of Gamaliel. Not Gargamel of the Smurfs. But he sat up under him and he learned about God all the Old Testament scriptures, he knew like the back of his hand. And you say, well, why is he persecuting these guys? Well, see, the issue was they learned all about the Old Testament, but 
the new believers, the believers that saw and touched and seen Jesus' miracles, they said they're making this stuff up. Yeah, it's kind of odd because in the Old Testament it actually talks about this Savior coming, but I guess they just didn't believe it was him. It, it was, I guess you had to be there, as they say. So he heard all these people, he's like, no, you guys are, 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 are not doing what God wants you to do. You're making up stuff. So he looked in his Old Testament Bible and says, hey, you guys got to follow this thing. So yeah, the Sanhedrin Council was, was definitely helpful. The same way the Sanhedrin Council was helpful of being able to get Jesus crucified. So Saul, he says, well, Caius, I want a letter. So he gets the letter and gets it, and gets it taken. So he's going to go to basically take the men the women, all that believe in this Jesus Christ, and he's going to bring them back, and he's going to put them in jail, and he's going to beat them. So, him and this man get all on horse, and they're going to head it there. Well, he basically gets outside of the city, like right there. And what is what actually happens? A huge bright light. I got a light that is maybe similar to it. Check this out. That's a bright light, isn't it? But it was much brighter than that. A light so bright, it knocked him off of his horse. Imagine Saul being knocked off his high horse. Well, see, the issue with Saul was, see, Saul was kind of like a, a, oh, push. Telling people what they could and they couldn't do. That's really not what we should be doing. But that's what he was. He was going around telling people they shouldn't do this, they shouldn't do this, they shouldn't do this. Basically, taking the whole reason why Jesus Christ came out of it. Because Jesus Christ came then we may be saved through him and nothing else. Not by works, not how well we could do this, not how well we could do that. It was our true belief in Jesus Christ as our savior. Not just with our mouth, but in our hearts. It's right, not the thing that pumps, but what really guides us to where we should go. How we really feel, feel about doing stuff. So, with, with Saul being this oh, two referee, he got knocked off his high horse. And getting knocked off his high horse, he heard a voice. They said, Saul, Saul. And Saul replied, Who art thou, Lord? If you got a second, you could actually read it with me. Turn to Acts chapter 9. Let's see if we can find it. Have y'all gotten there yet? Can you find it? Okay. 
chapter 9, verse 4 and 6. Y'all see what he says? Yeah. He says, Saul, why do you persecute me? It's hard to kick against the pricks. And then Saul says, what do you want me to do? He said, go into the city. what you be told what to do imagine it he not knowing what's going on this time now the other people around you remember he didn't go by himself he had some other guys with him they heard the voice but they didn't see no man or anything so Saul gets up and he stands up but he's blind and he couldn't see so they actually walk him into the city and he was told to go to a man's house named Judas. Not Judas that betrayed Jesus, but another Judas. He actually lived on Straight Street of all places. Yeah. There's more to the story. You're welcome to read it all. But it's amazing how you can think you're doing right, but when you encounter God, when you encounter Jesus Christ, you become totally blinded on what you used to see and you need Him to be able to give you the sight that you should have. The rest of the story goes on that you know, he was actually given his sight through Jesus Christ by way of one of the disciples, Jesus. Jesus actually came to him in a dream and told him that Saul would be coming. And at first he was like, man, I heard bad things about this man. He said, yeah, but go to him. Give him his sight back. And Ananias did. He came in and touched him and gave him the Holy Spirit. And he received, and Saul received the Holy Spirit. He came back. Jesus told him he'll have to suffer much, much, much great things for his name's sake. And we read about him. And it's not that he suffered so much. It's that look how much we encourage when we what? When we suffer. We have what? Yes, we have faith. We get to believe in something we can't see because of what we can see. That's the game for you. So we have to remember what? Faith is what? Believing in what we can't see because of what we can see. And we have to also know. Guess what? We all had a challenge. We all had friends or family members that saw one thing one way and all of a sudden they saw things different. We gotta be able to encourage them. We gotta be able to not only support them, but we gotta be able to share our story too. Because they'll have their story. And we'll have our story together. That's what it is to be what? A family. So we gotta remember.
knowing Jesus can change the way we see everything. Till next time.